the holiday of Purim is one of the seven mitzvos of the rabbis. And according to many commentators and halachic codifiers, there are also seven mitzvos associated with the holiday of Purim. What are the seven mitzvos? Number one, to hear the Megillah twice. Number two, to give charity to two poor people. Number three, to give two ready to eat foods to at least one person. Number four, to feast royally on this day. Number five, not to fast or eulogize on this day. Number six, to read the Torah pertaining to what a Malik wanted to do to us, to remember a Malik and to therefore erase their name. And number seven, to recite the Al Hanisim in the prayers of the Amida and the Berkat Hamazon, the grace after meals. However, of all these seven mitzvahs, the most prominent and the most important is the mitzvah of Matones Lev to give charity to the poor. How do we understand this on the level of Pshat and Remiz and Drush and Soid and Chsidis? First and foremost, on the level of Pshat, what is the meaning of giving charity to poor people? First and foremost, we have to give to poor people charity on Purim. If you cannot find two poor people, at least put it into a tzedakah box, a charity box, for two organizations, and they will receive the money even after Purim. Furthermore, even a poor man who throughout the year collects charity must also give tzedakah on the holiday of Purim. Another mitzvah or aspect, anyone who stretches out his arm, you have to give him money on Purim. Throughout the year, you can say, well, I want to see your credentials, where you're coming from, where is the money going? However, when it comes to the holiday of Purim, even if the man comes out of a Rolls Royce, dressed like a king, and stretches out his arm for charity, you have to give him tzedakah. Which is one of the reasons that our rabbis tell us that we dress up on Purim, so that not to embarrass the poor. And therefore the poor can be dressed like the rich, and the rich can dress like the poor, and you can put a mask on your face, and no one knows who you are when you're asking for tzedakah, for charity. This is the pshat, the simple concept of tzedakah on Purim. What is the remez, what is the hint? The hint is that we are told in the Talmud, Ein Yisrael the golden elephant tzedakah that the Jewish people are going to be redeemed from this exile because of the mitzvah of tzedakah. And therefore it's important to give charity and as we give charity to think about how this penny and how this nickel and how this dime will bring us closer to the redemption. Furthermore, we call the mitzvah matonesh lev yoinim, gifts to those that are poor. There are two terminologies for one who is poor. One is ani, a poor man, and then number two is an evyoin. Evyoin means one who is so destitute that he desires everything he sees. He has totally nothing. And because he has nothing, anything that he sees, he wants. And yet we are told that we are to give him matonois, not only charity, but also gifts. Gifts means you give him more than he deserves. As the Talmud says, you only give a gift to somebody who you like and someone who did you a favor. And therefore the gift has to be a bigger giving of charity. And therefore we ask Almighty God that He should give us matonis lav Even if we have no merits and even if we are undeserving, still and all He should give us the greatest gift. And that is to bring about the redemption of the Gula Amitiz Vashlema through the coming of Mashiach. What is Drush? What is the Hamaletics? The Rambam tells us in the laws of Megillah chapter 2, says the Rambam that it's good for a person to increase in the giving of matones lav yoinim, charity to the poor on the holiday of Purim, more than increasing in the meal, the festive meal of rejoicing 
on Purim, and even more than giving Mishloyach Manoish Lereyu to give gifts to your friends. Why? Even though you can give more than one friend two ready to eat gifts, and even though you can continue to eat and drink and say L'chaim all day on Purim, still no says the Rambam, She'ein Simcha G'dayla. There is no greater joy and wondrous joy. Only the joy of one who makes the hearts of the poor and the orphans and the widows to rejoice. By making all of these people, including converts, by giving them tzedakah and giving them strength and making them rejoice, Doime Lishchina says that Ambam, you are compared to the Shechina, to the Divine Presence, to God Himself. In other words, we have a quantum leap by giving charity to the poor. Says that Ambam, you leave the dimension of creation and you go into the dimension of Creator. And therefore, we see the great mitzvah and, gay, and the great responsibility of giving tzedakah to the poor by doing so, says the Rambam, you make all of these broken-hearted people happy, and this is the greatest mitzvah possible, and because of this, you are like the Shekhinah, you are doimel the shechina. you are like God himself. This is the homiletics. What is the soid? What is the esoteric? We find in Mishnah's Chassidim and we find in the Pri Chaim, in the works of Kabbalah, it says that the mitzvah of Matone Yislev Yoinim, to give gifts to the poor, comes from the two attributes of Netzach and Hoid. These two attributes of Netzach, which means victory, and Hoid, which means acknowledgement. This is where the mitzvah of gifts to the poor is situated. And they go on to say that this is similar to the Badi Arav. This is similar to the Aravot, the willow that we use on the holiday of Sukkot. The willow has no smell and no taste, implying that this person, this Ani, this poor man, has no smell and no taste. In other words, he has no Torah knowledge. And he has no good deeds. The taste represents the knowledge of Torah. And the smell and fragrance represents one that does good deeds. And therefore this poor man is an evyoy. He has nothing. And yet you give him matonish, you give him gifts. So therefore you have the ability to go from this level of netzach and hoid which is like that of the willow, to the level, the highest level of Kesed, to the highest level of God's crown. In contrast to the mitzvah of Ishleri Ehu, the mitzvah of giving two ready-to-eat foods to your neighbor, to your friend, this represents one who is Shlebus Avoida, one who is complete in his service to God, that he has both Tam Vareyach, he both has the smell and the fragrance. In Torah knowledge, and therefore he's called your friend in Torah, and he also has a good fragrance for he does good deeds, which also implies the etrog that we eat, or rather that we can eat after Sukkot, but that we shake in the lulav on the holiday of Sukkot. What does Hasidu say? Why is it that the mitzvah of charity on Purim is so important? There are two basic reasons for this. Number one is, what was the sin that brought about the terrible decree of Haman wanting to annihilate the entire Jewish people? The Gemara says the sin was that the Jewish people bowed down to an idol at the feast of Ahasuerus. The idea of bowing down to the idol is the opposite of Hashem Echod Va'am Echod, the one God and the one people of Israel. And therefore this caused a divisiveness. 
This caused a separation in the unity between man and God and the unity between man and man. Similarly, Haman came along to Achashverosh and he said, You should know, Yeshna Am Echad, Mufuzar, Mufoyrad, Bein Amim. There is a nation. However, they are spread out throughout the entire provinces of the king. In other words, even though the Am Echad, they should be united as one, but they're not. They're divided amongst themselves. There's divisiveness amongst the Jewish people. They have no power and therefore it will be easy to destroy them. Comes along the rabbis and said that we have to now make mitzvahs that will unite the Jewish people. And there are two basic mitzvahs of these seven mitzvahs that we mentioned earlier that deal primarily with unity. The first one is too ready to eat gifts to your friends, which is called Mishloyach Monois. And then there is the mitzvah of Matonis Lavyonim, gifts to the poor. When it comes to give food to your friend and neighbor, this also represents unity. This also represents bonding and creating a closeness. However, to begin with, he is your neighbor, he is your friend. You're close, but through giving him these gifts, you become even closer. But when you talk about giving charity to the poor, you are dealing here with polar opposites. Here, on one hand, you have a rich man who is very successful and has everything that he needs. And now he goes out of his house to find a poor man who is totally an evyoin. An evyoin that is destitute and has nothing. And because he has nothing, he desires everything he sees. And this person who is totally destitute and poverty stricken now receives a gift of charity from the, poor man, from the rich man. And now the poor man and the rich man become one. And because they become one, and they are united, this is the antidote to the sin of why the decree came about. And furthermore, not only does the rich man and, be, and poor man become one, but now the creator and creation, man and God also become one, because by giving charity, you emulate God, and therefore you become one with God. Therefore, from all the mitzvahs that we do on Purim, the most important and the most sacred and the most applauded is the mitzvah of tzedakah. And therefore, the Rebbe goes on to explain that we have a great obligation to remind people on the holiday of Purim to give tzedakah and to give mishleach manis. Even people who celebrate the holiday of Purim in a great measure by feasting royally and going to the shul twice to hear the Megillah, etc., etc., they perhaps can overlook the importance of giving charity to poor people. And similarly, this is something that we must educate young children, boys and girls, to give charity to the poor on the holiday of Purim. Furthermore, says the Rebbe, of all the mitzvahs of Purim, this is the easiest mitzvah to do. What does that mean? When it comes to the reading of the Megillah, number one, you have to have a kosher Megillah. So you have to find the kosher Megillah. Not everybody has a kosher Megillah. Number two, you have to find a Balkora, someone who can read the Megillah. And then you have to hear the entire Megillah from the beginning to the end. It's very, very troublesome and, and uh, it takes a long time. And then it comes to the mitzvah of feasting royally. You have to prepare a whole feast, you have to cook, and you have to invite people, and you have to have wine, you have to drink, etc., etc. It's fun, but it also takes a long time. And then you have the mitzvah of giving two rated foods to your neighbor. You have to make sure it's ready to eat. You can't give them raw chicken, and you can't give them a frozen steak, but it has to be food that they can eat. And you have to make sure that they like it. If they don't, they don't like the gift that you gave them, you don't fulfill the obligation. And then the uh, mitzvah that one is not allowed to fast on Purim. 
If a person is in a dire situation, that he's very melancholy, he had a terrible dream, or he suffered a terrible, terrible experience, and therefore he wants to fast, comes along the Shulchan Aruch and says he can't fast. To change your mindset is one of the most difficult things. I want to fast, I'm in a bad mood, and now you're telling me I'm not allowed to fast, and I'm not allowed to eulogize on this day of Purim. It's a very, very difficult paradigm shift. And similarly, to say al and benching, and the Amida means you have to have a Siddur. And years ago you didn't have printed books, you had to know it by heart, and you had to know how to say it, and when to say it, etc., etc. But here we say the easiest thing to do is to take two pennies or two nickels and just put it into two pushkas. It takes literally a half a second. And it's not a lot of money. Everybody has pocket change. Take out a nickel and put it into the pushka. So the mitzvah of giving money to the poor is really the easiest and it really has the least contingencies of all the other mitzvahs. And why is it so? Because it's the most important one. We see this in a person's life, that we have essentials. We need to breathe, and we need to eat, and we need to have garments, and we have to have a house. Yet, the most expensive is the home, less expensive is clothing, less expensive is food. And the least of all is ear. Here is for free. You walk into the street and you breathe. As we say in Tehillim, Kerl Anishama, Tahalo Kalaluka, Kol Nishima Nishima, that we praise God and we thank God for every breath. Because if we don't breathe, we can't survive. Here is for free. Why it's the most essential? Food, you need food also, but not every moment. So it costs a little more. Garments, you also need garments, but you don't need to change your clothes three times a day or 60 times every minute. A house, one house for your lifetime is enough. And therefore what is more essential is cheaper. What is less essential is more expensive. And the same is true with the mitzvahs. Of all the mitzvahs that we have to do on Purim, the most essential and the most important is the giving of charity to the poor. And therefore says the Rebbe that this is the easiest mitzvah for a person to do. However, you should not only fulfill your obligation of giving two little coins to two poor people, but on the contrary, as the Rambam says, you should increase and increase and increase more and more. And go adaloyada until you don't know anymore how much you gave and not to reckon with how much money you have in your bank account but to give it in a big way and by us giving charity in a big way without contemplating all the details God will do his matonis lev yoinim he will give his gifts to the poor, to the Jewish people and bring about the coming of Mashiach when we'll have the ultimate in his hapachu the transformation of darkness into light and we will see a world of true joy and happiness with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.